Chapter 43 Min Lee took one step into the walled courtyard and then stopped. Countless red threads covered the ground like intricate lace. Interwoven in the red strings were thousands and thousands of small clay figures, each no longer than her finger. Like a spider, in the exact center sat the old man of the moon. He sat cross-legged with a giant book on his lap. His head was bowed over two clay figures in his hand, so that the most that Min Lee saw of him was the top of his head. But she could see his delicate, wrinkled hands skillfully tying the figures in his lap together with a red thread. A blue silk bag full of red strings lay open beside him, and Min Lee felt a shock run through her as she saw it. She had seen that bag before. Deep blue silk, silver embroidery. It was the bag the buffalo boy's friend had been carrying that starry night. She's the goddess of weaving, Min Lee realized. She spins the red thread for the old man of the moon. I knew there was something different about her. No wonder she knew how to find the king. The old man reached beside him for his walking stick, a bent, twisted wood stick, that tap and tapped it on the ground. Silently, the clay figures floated from his hand, drifted in the air, then settled to the ground at opposite ends of the courtyard. The old man's threads still connected them, and the red line wove itself among the other strands surrounding him. As Min Lee stared, the old man looked at her. The silver hair of his beard seemed to flow like a glowing waterfall and disappear into the folds of his robe and his dark eyes matched the blackness of the night sky. Ah, the old man said, it's you. Minley nodded and bowed deeply. She would have kneeled on the ground, but she was afraid of disrupting the clay figures standing on the ground at her feet. Well, come here then, the old man said impatiently, and tapped his stick on the ground again. And with a sound like a flapping of a bird's wing, the clay figures moved, clearing a path for Minley. I know you have questions for me, the old man said. Every ninety-nine years, someone comes here with their questions. "'but I will answer only one. "'So choose your care question carefully.' "'One question?' "'Min Lee almost stopped walking in shock. "'If she was only out allowed to ask one question, "'she could not ask Dragon's question for him, "'unless she did not ask her own. "'Min Lee felt like a fish gasping for air. "'What was she going to do? "'The memories of the hard work in the rice fields, her father's careworn hands, the plain rice in the dinner bowls, and Ma's sighs washed upon her like the splashes of water from the lake. She had to change her fortune. She must ask how to do that. But when Minley thought about Dragon, waiting for her patiently, it was as if she had been struck. And like seeds falling from Wu Kang's tree, images of the dragon rained upon her. Their laughter as they passed the monkeys, his awkward struggles walking in the woods, his echoing roar as he flung the green tiger into the air, the kind hand he put on her shoulder when she cried, and the hopeful look in his eyes as she left. Dragon is my friend, Min Lee said to herself. What should I do? Min Lee's thoughts bubbled faster and faster like boiling rice. Every step she took seemed to throb, and Min Lee wasn't sure if the pounding was her heart or Wu Kang's axe in the distance. As she passed the clay statue, she thought she could see figures of the goldfish man, the buffalo boy, the king, and Da'afu silently watching her. Minley's feet seemed to ignore her pleas for slowness. Like the kite being pulled in, she was being drawn toward the old man of the moon without delay. Before she could decide whose question to ask, Minley found herself facing him. The old man of the moon looked at her expectantly, his black eyes as unreadable as the night sky. Minley looked down into the open book on his lap. She recognized the open page as the king's borrowed line, the smoothed-out folds and the holes she had made in it when she had turned it into a kite were still there. Yet now the paper was invisibly fastened in the book with only a thin line, like a scar showing that it had ever been removed. And the words had changed again. There was a single line of words running down the entire page. As she looked, Minley realized for the first time she could read the words or really, the word. For the line was only made of one word, written over and over again, and that word was thankfulness. And suddenly, like the light when the clouds move away from the moon, Minley knew clearly what question to ask. There's a dragon waiting at the bridge, she said. Why can he not fly? <laughs>